Hello, wonderful wanderers of the internet. Welcome to a new year, full of all sorts of different adventures. Speaking of things that are different, Black Sheeps! Ah, yeah. Welcome to a new series called Black Sheep Games, where we go over games that have veered off the true and tried course of a series and became their own little special story. And to start things off, we've got to go into space! Ah. Welcome to space. Over the past year, we've looked over many Metroid titles, like Metroid on the NES, all the way up to Metroid Samus Returns. But we've left out a few key games, black sheep of the series, if you will. There's the Metroid Prime Pinball title where you ping-pong your way all around the story of Metroid Prime 1. Or that one game that had Blast Ball in it. But there's one true Black Sheep that we've missed out on. A game that focuses on action and lore. Yes, today we're looking at Metroid Other M. Other M came out at a weird time in the Metroid series, since Retro Studios had just wrapped up the Metroid Prime trilogy in a nice bow, and they were off doing their own monkey business. Yeah. Well, Team Ninja had to take the helm on this new title, but people were unsure of what they would do. Would they stick with the Prime title's first-person shooter action adventure, or would they go back to the third-person 2D action adventure? Well, it turns out they wanted to make a Metroid Fusion, but not that one. And they mixed the two genres together to make an all-new 3D Metroid title with a focus on the 2D elements, with a sprinkle of the first person on top. So the games have beautiful new 3D graphics, great! But how's the control? Well, director Sakamoto wanted to make sure the controls were simple, just like an NES controller. Because games with too many buttons might scare away gamers. I mean, have you seen this? What is that? Is that Greek? I don't like it. But with these new simple controls, that meant nunchucks were out of the picture this game is a Wiimote only. Which means you're traveling this new 3D world with the D-pad. Oh, come on, Nintendo, I thought we learned our lessons from Mario 64 DS. <sighs> but if I'm being honest, I can get used to the whole D-pad movement issue. But what the bigger problem is, is that they mapped a new ability to the D-pad as well, the dodge roll. You see, when enemies attack you now, you can tap a direction on the D-pad in order to dodge. But you can't be moving when you do this. So most of the time, I just end up tapping the D-pad furiously like a maniac, and Samus starts scooting around like a total goof. But she's still near invincible while I do it, so why would I ever stop? Unique control schemes aside, what I was most excited for in Other M was the story. You see, most Metroid games go something like this. You land on an alien planet, you fight some hostile aliens, you blow up the planet, and bada bing bada boom, you go home, eat yourself a chocolate boat cookie, and have a nice day. But Metroid Other M promised to be grander and give us all sorts of lore revelations about titles like Metroid Fusion. So, I was really excited to really dig into it. And this is the point of the review where I'm gonna go into the stories, the characters, and the bosses. So, let's put on the spoiler alarms. Oh my gosh, wow, it's so loud in here. Oh my goodness, spoilers. So, if you don't wanna be spoiled, you better go on, pause the video. I'll be here, waiting for you when you come back. Bye. Did they leave? Alright, it's spoiler time. You sign up for this. No going back. Here we go. Who? So the first standout difference is the characters in Other M. I know, characters in a video game, right? Like, what is this, Days of the NES? But, for the Metroid series, it's actually a pretty big deal to have characters, since other than Metro Prime 3, the series didn't really have a lot of standout characters, other than Samus and a computer AI named Adam. And when your game has a computer AI that's one of the main characters in the game, that's kind of a sign that you don't have a lot going on in the character department. But, we just so happen to learn more about this character Adam in the new game Other M. Now how about that? And other than Adam Melkovich, we meet a couple other members of the Galactic Federation. Like Lyle, Pierce, Maurice, and KG. And most importantly, my best chummy chum paleo polio brother from another mother, Anthony Hicks. I love this character so much, but really, the only two important characters in this game are these two right here. The other ones are kind of just follow this wayside, but they're still really important for telling this game's story. It doesn't take long for this game's story to get really interesting when bodies start showing up and people start going missing. And you're like, oh no, it's uh, it's uh, my favorite character. Uh, uh, yeah, it's to my Lyle's tongue. It's Lyle, Lyle. Yeah, Lyle. The one named after the museum. Lyle Smithsonian. Yeah. Yeah, dang. 
really miss him. Well... But anyways, once you get back to the main story again, you learn that there's a traitor among the 7th Platoon, who Samus aptly names the Deleter. Someone to wipe out any survivors as well as anyone who learned about the secret project. KG, James, Anthony, and Adam. Could one of them really be a traitor? Until I found out who it was, I decided to call the traitor the Deleter. I love a good mystery. The introduction of the Deleter raised the stakes of the game and kept me laser focused on what was going on in the game to see if I could find out who was going to get deleted next and who was doing all the deleting. And as you play the game and continue onwards, it gets even more tense. As you get invested in these characters, you start to really care about them, and you wonder when you split paths, will you ever even see these characters again? Is this your last moments with them? What's going to happen next? But why do I like these characters? Well, for Malkovich, it's because you get all these little flashbacks that tell you about Malkovich's character in the past, when he was Samus' boss in the Galactic Federation. And you also learn that Samus used to see him as a father figure. But, then there's also Anthony, who... How do I even start? He's just the best character ever. I love Anthony. Everything he does just makes me smile. I mean, he hangs out with Samus and they're like best friends and they can crack jokes and smile and it's so unique to see Samus in this kind of light that we never get to see her in because normally she's just completely alone. And it's thanks to these awesome characters that we get one of the best boss fights in Other M. Yeah, we're on to the boss battles. And what better way to get things started than the main Metroid baddie himself? Not that one. Nope. Nope, keep going, keep going, keep going. That! There he is, Ridley. So not only in this game do you get to meet Baby Ridley, who, let's be honest, is almost as cute as Baby Yoda, I mean. Eh? Eh? But you also get to fight this Ridley multiple times as he evolves to the form we truly know him as. But you won't know he's Ridley until you get to this scene. You walk into a dark corridor, and suddenly you see a laser point on your face, and you're like, it's the Deleter! He's trying to kill me! But then you look over and you're like, it's the plasma gun! Anthony's the deleter! What? But then, he yells at you and says... Get out the way. So you get out of the way, and suddenly you hear that evil screech, and you know it's go time. And then BAM! Ridley slams into the platform. Samus realizes who she's up against. She gets all traumatized, and she remembers that Ridley killed her parents right in front of her. And she starts freaking out, and Ridley slams her into a wall, but then my boy Anthony comes out with the laser gun and goes doo -doo 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 -doo, and saves Samus, and she lands back on the platform, and Anthony starts going toe with toe with Ridley, but then BAM! Anthony falls down into the lava, and the battle begins. So after that, not only am I excited to fight Ridley because he's like, the best Metroid boss ever, and his music is an absolute banger, but I also have all these feelings of rage and sadness because he killed off another character that I care deeply about, and just like that, I'm motivated to take this man down. The fight that follows is an amazing spectacle with all sorts of fancy camera angles, multiple phases, and using the all new dodge system, which really shines in these boss battles. And it's not just this boss either, but all bosses, they really hit differently thanks to the freedom of movement you get in this game, unlike the Prime games where you're kind of just stuck behind the first person view. And the bosses do a great job at mixing the spectacle with the gameplay, where when you get into a new boss fight, you usually interact with some kind of cutscene, it'll give you a new power-up to use on the boss that you're currently fighting, which leads me right into one of the most controversial parts of Metroid on the Moon. So way back in 2010, which is now over a decade ago, <sighs> I heard a lot of mumblings about this game that people didn't like the way Adam restricted you from using your items in the game. You see, Samus had her full loadout at the beginning of the game, but she decided that Adam should be the one who decides when she gets to use them. So the whole game, you're locked off from all your items until Adam gives you the A-OK. -okay. A lot of people felt like this restricted their freedom to play the game the way they wanted to, and it made them really upset. I mean, it's pretty frustrating when you get to a point in the game where you know you could break something with like the speed boost, but Adam hasn't permitted it yet, so you just have to stare at a wall and do nothing. I mean, what are you, my dad? Ugh! But, aside from a couple instances like that, it's really not as bad as it sounds, because most of these power-ups are integrated into action set pieces or bosses. So you'll be going along, playing the game, and then BAM! 
Adam will call you up and be like, Say the serial line to use a new power-up. And you'll be like, oh sweet, new power-up. And then you'll get to use it immediately and figure out exactly how it works in the game in that exciting set piece. Which I think is great game design and a fun way to learn your new mechanic in the game. I mean, if I had to pick between exploring to get items or getting them through Adam's authorization, obviously I'd pick exploring for items over Adam's authorization. But I don't think it's as glaring as an issue as people make it out to be. And towards the end of the game, they let the reins loose and Samus just activates her own powers. And it feels awesome. Any, Any objections, Adam? Adam? Alright, it's about time to wrap things up, but before I go, I should mention how incredible the voice acting and the graphics are in this game. I mean, this is pretty much as close as we'll ever get to a Metroid anime, and I can't get enough of it. I think it's so incredible, especially for a Wii game. And I can't wait to see how much everything is improved by the time we get to Metroid Prime 4 on Switch, considering they did this on just the Wii. Because remember, we never got a Wii U Metroid game. Did we, Nintendo? I thought I'd forget. But I'll never forget the Wii U. I'll always remember the Wii U. May it rest in peace, and may its greatness always be. Thank you so much for watching, you lovely, lovely people. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to check out more Metroid-related content, I've got two other episodes of Seerlution about the entire Metroid Prime series and the entire 2D Metroid series, which came before us. Also, since we've played through all these Metroid games, I'd love to hear what your favorite Metroid game is as well. In the spur of the moment, I'd probably have to say Metroid Prime, the first one on GameCube is my favorite. And if you have any other Black Sheep games you want me to check out, be sure to tell me about those as well. This has been Drenkaz, and I will see you later. Oh, God. Uh, uh, uh.